This video is not about anything, it's about nothing. But what is, nothing? Not a little bit of something. Not darkness, not emptiness, I mean true, absolute nothingness. It sounds simple, but it's one of the most complex questions in science and philosophy. And the more we try to understand nothing, the more we discover, it might not exist at all. Let's start with a paradox. Can nothing even be something we can talk about? In everyday language, we say things like, there's nothing in the box. But that usually means, no cookies, or no air, not literally no thing. The box still has space, volume, atoms, maybe radiation. So what if we remove all the atoms, the particles, the radiation, then you're left with a vacuum. But even that isn't truly empty. Thanks to quantum field theory, we know that, even the vacuum, buzzes, with activity. According to physicists like Werner Heisenberg, empty space is never truly still. Thanks to the uncertainty principle, particles can pop into and out of existence. We call them virtual particles, temporary blips in the fabric of space. You may have heard of the Casimir effect, where two metal plates placed extremely close in a vacuum actually move toward each other, seemingly pulled by nothing. But it's not nothing. It's the quantum fields of space creating real, measurable force. So the vacuum, the supposed nothing, is actually teeming with activity. But maybe if we remove all matter, and even all energy, could we get to real nothing? Well, not so fast. Einstein's theory of general relativity tells us that energy is spacetime. So, if there's space, there's something. You can't just erase space like a drawing on a chalkboard. Even empty spacetime has properties, it can curve, ripple, expand. So again, not nothing. Okay, so maybe physics has no room for, nothing. But what about philosophy? Parmenides, an ancient Greek philosopher, argued that, nothing, is impossible. If you can think about it, it's not nothing. Meanwhile, Martin Heidegger asked, why is there something rather than nothing? And if we go really deep, like Stephen Hawking and James Hartle did with their no-boundary proposal, even the Big Bang didn't come from nothing. They proposed that time and space are finite, but with no boundary, no edge, no singular beginning. So the universe didn't pop out of nothing, it just didn't need anything else to begin. So, is nothing, even real? Lawrence Krauss wrote his famous book, A Universe from Nothing, where he explains how even nothing can give rise to a universe, thanks to the laws of physics. But wait, if nothing follows laws, is it really nothing? If there's potential, if there's a quantum field, then is it really nothing? Or there's already something? Here's the wild part. Even a perfect vacuum, stripped of all particles and energy, still has rules. And rules are something. So maybe, nothing doesn't exist. Maybe it can't. Because even the absence of everything still comes wrapped in space, time, math, and mystery. In the end, asking what is nothing, might be like trying to smell the color blue. It forces us to confront the limits of our understanding, and the strange truth that maybe, just maybe, there was never nothing to begin with. If nothing doesn't exist, then what was there before the universe? Not just before stars, or before atoms, I mean before anything. You might imagine a cold, silent void, a black screen, but even that has dimension, darkness, a place to be, which makes it, not nothing. Let's take a moment for the following question. What does it even mean to ask what was before the universe? Time, our sense of before and after, started with the universe. At least according to Einstein in the standard Big Bang model. So the idea of before the Big Bang might be like asking, what's north of the North Pole? It's not a forbidden question, it's just the wrong kind. And yet, physicists like Roger Penrose, Carlo Rovelli, and Sean Carroll keep exploring possible pre-Big Bang states. Not nothing, but maybe something different than we can even conceive. Now let's flip the question. If we can't find nothing in nature, can we make it? Apparently we can get close. In particle accelerators and labs like the European Organization for Nuclear Research or CERN for short. We create near-perfect vacuums, removing atoms, cooling things to near absolute zero, and shielding from radiation. But even then, there's always some fluctuation, some noise some rule being obeyed. You can't isolate a system completely from the universe, so even our best attempts at nothing, are still something. Imagine this. 
you delete every atom, photon, and force from existence. You turn off time, space, laws, and even consciousness. There's no observer, no container, no memory. Would that be, nothing, or just the absence of our definition of something? Because maybe nothing is just a shadow cast by the limits of our language. Our brains evolved to handle lions and berries, not quantum foam and timeless singularities. And the closer we get to nothing, the more we start to think we're actually staring into the fabric of everything. So the next time you stare into empty space, remember, it's never truly empty. Even nothing has depth, and sometimes, the silence between things, says the most. Thanks for watching, I'm physicist Dodi and this was Physics Tales. Please like, subscribe and if you think nothing actually exists leave a comment below, until next time, stay curious.